people who are very heavy, body mass index over 50. Um, but it's becoming a primary operation. With the gastric bypass, two mechanisms, small pouch, small meals, makes you intolerant to the high fat, high sugar foods. Gastric bypass patients, literature reports 60, uh, 65 to 70 percent excess weight loss in the first year. So if you're 100 pounds overweight, 65, 70 pounds is average. 200 pounds overweight, 130, 140 pound weight loss in the first year is average. The exercisers do even better. People that are real careful about their diet do even better. This is the average. People that can't exercise, hip is already finished, knee is already finished, won't exercise, never have, never will, and you can't make me, don't do as good. People that cheat on their diet don't do as good, but this is what the average patient does. With the band, small pouch, small meals, when the band is adjusted correctly, your appetite is suppressed. But the food goes from this little upper pouch to the lower stomach and then empties normally. Okay? Same thing with the sleeve, small storage area, but the food empties normally. So with the sleeve and with the band, we don't have this dumping syndrome. Okay? And so there is more variety in your diet. So with the band, you could sip on milkshakes until you hit 600 pounds. You just have to pace yourself. You know, with the sleeve, you could eat chocolate until you exploded. Those things will make you sick over here. Okay, so with the band and with the sleeve, you have to be able to stay away from those things. Okay, so there's more variety in your diet. Because there's more variety in your diet and it takes several weeks to get this thing running, the literature reports about a 30% excess weight loss at one year with the band and about a 50% excess weight loss at three years. Little less weight loss, little slower weight loss. The exercisers do better. People that are real careful about their diet do better. Okay, people that are really into healthy foods, you know, they'd rather cook healthy meals. Um, and people that like to exercise can do as well with a band as they can with a bypass. Okay, but this, these are the averages, okay? Literature says about 60% excess weight loss at one year with a sleeve. Done of 50 or 60 of these, I can't tell them apart from the gastric bypass patients when I look at just their weight loss. They do about the same. So, more complicated operation, a little more effective, safest, simplest operation, slower weight loss, right in the middle. Which one you pick is up to you. Gastric bypass surgery, about a 90% cure rate of adult onset diabetes. How cool is that? Huh? Um, sleeve, the band about 50% cure rate. Uh, for some patients that have really bad heartburn, really bad reflux, almost 100% cure rate with this. When the band is adjusted correctly, very good at controlling reflux. Um, in fact, if the reflux comes back, it's usually because we made the band a little bit too tight. Um, sleeve, patients that require medicines to control reflux, Pepsid, Prevacid, and uh, they probably have to stay on that medicine for at least the first year. Not as good at, at controlling reflux. For patients who have to take medicines that are, have a bad ulcer risk, bad rheumatoid arthritis, um, some other illnesses, um, sometimes we would recommend a sleeve to avoid the ulcer risk of the bypass. You know, so there's some specific reasons, but mainly it's, it's choice, you know, which, you know, which one you like the most. You know, for somebody that's not a sweet eater, not a snacker, they come home at 8 o'clock, at 9 o'clock they have a feast, 10 o'clock they go to bed, no feast, no feast. You know, for the person that can't walk by that plate of brownies without taking a half a brownie on each trip, I resemble that remark. You know, maybe you need a little help with the high fat, high sugar foods. You know, so you got to think about, you know, what are my behaviors and, you know, where are my problems and stuff like that. But um, if this looks like something you're interested in, the next thing we do is um, go over to the group practice and talk about your medical history, see is this reasonably safe, are there some individual questions you might have, 
And then uh, uh, if it looks like the right thing for you, then we'll work with your insurance carrier to get permission to do it at our center. And then when that's done, we'll work with you to pick a date. About a week before the surgery, you come back here, we do the pre-op testing, EKG, chest x-ray, blood work, the routine testing that we need to do for anybody with a general anesthetic. You'll meet with our internal medicine doctor. She'll do a good exam on you, help us take care of you while you're in the hospital, help work on your medicines after you're ready to go home. Um, you'll meet with our nutritional therapist, and she'll talk with you about what to eat while the stomach is healing. You know, there's always some swelling here. So uh while it's healing there's always some swelling around the sleeve there's always some swelling around the band so the diet is about the same for all three liquid diet full liquids pureed foods soft cooked foods regular chow again just kind of like a broken jaw diet and she'll have that all written out what to eat when and some recipes to make sure that during the liquid phase you're getting enough calories and enough protein to heal everything the week before surgery, everybody stops any kind of ibuprofen medicine, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, anything with aspirin in it. These medicines also affect how blood clots. One dose lasts about a week, so the key is to watch out for hidden aspirin. Things like Alka-Seltzer, Contact, even Pepto-Bismol has aspirin in it. So read the box on everything the week before. Um, this takes 90 minutes, this takes 30 minutes, this takes 40 or 50 minutes. You go to the recovery room, I'll come out and find your family. About three hours after surgery, we have everybody walking. The most important thing that you can do to get through this is to get out of bed. Okay. Problem? Okay. Uh, the most important thing that you can do to get through this is to get out of bed. Um, blood clots and pneumonias are the main reason why an otherwise healthy young person would die from this surgery. And the risk is associated with time spent in bed. So by three hours, our nurses get everybody up. Okay, if they can't get you up, I have to get you up. If I have to get you up, it's usually a little bit noisier. You get a free motivational talk at the same time. You know, if somebody in my family was having this, somebody I was, you know, really, really concerned about, no matter where they were having it, I'd be there. You know, I'd get a couple of days off work. I'd get a hotel room nearby so I could sleep at night. I'd park myself in the chair next to her bed. I'd keep her stoned on the pain medicine so nothing bothered her. But about every hour, by my watch, We'd make a lap around the nursing station, you know, get up, once around the nursing station, take some deep breaths, take some more drugs, go back to sleep, I'll see you in an hour. You know, you take enough pain medicine so nothing bothers you. That's the right dose. But that'll make you lazy and sleepy. Narcotics do that, you know. So it's nice to have somebody who's with you who understands how important it is you keep moving. Um, about three or four hours after surgery, we do an x-ray to make sure that the band is sitting correctly and that what you drink goes through. When the x-ray is good, we start you on sips of water, popsicles, jello. Most people go home that afternoon. With the sleeve and with the bypass, first morning, we do an x-ray. Have you drink some stuff? We're watching it go through. Make sure that there is no leak along here. Make sure that the, that the sleeve is open. If you drink some stuff, watch it go through. Make sure that there is no leak in this area and that the opening is open. Start you on sips of water, popsicles, jello. Most people go home the morning of the second day. Okay, that first night, if you feel good and you're tolerating liquids, you can go home and sleep in your own bed. Okay, um, two weeks, we do a wound checkup. Six weeks, we do our first fill. Then we bring you back every three or four weeks until we get it adjusted correctly, and then we start to spread out the visits. With the, bi with the sleeve and with the bypass, two weeks, wound check, meet with nutrition. You're going on to pureed foods at that time. Six weeks, you're just getting onto solids, meet with nutrition again, there's always some questions. Three months, we do some blood work to make sure you can absorb enough of your vitamins. And then after that, we see you once a year. And I try to see you once a year for as long as I can. We'll talk about eating disorders and stress management and lifetime weight control, okay? Either any one of these operations, from the most effective, most complex, to the simplest, to the safest, the whole thing can turn bad just one bad thing after another after another until it turns into a death. Okay, you gotta hear that one time. The probability of that happening is very small. Less than one in a thousand, but not zero. Just cannot do operations of this magnitude in this population with no risk. If anybody tells you that, run. That's your warning. I don't know anybody that does it safer than we do, so do your homework, do your research, check us out, check me out, make sure you're in the right place, make sure you got the right guy. And when you figure out that for you, the operation is probably safer than not having the operation, then you're ready. Okay? Now, if you want to have this done with